Back in April, I produced a video called What is Wrong with Being the Right Whale, in which I discussed the three different species of right whale and how the number of individuals has increased or decreased over time. The North Atlantic right whales were once widespread throughout the North Atlantic, but they are now only found in the Western North Atlantic, along the Eastern US and Atlantic Canada. Commercial whaling decimated the population of the North Atlantic right whale, and by the time whaling was banned, they were close to extinction. Their numbers slowly increased, and between the year 1990 and 2010, the numbers were increasing by 2.8% per year, which brought the population up to 481 individuals. But something changed, and in 2017, NOAA declared an unusual mortality event for the North Atlantic right whales an event which continues into 2021. There are now only an estimated 360 whales left. The current total of dead stranded whales is 34. The leading cause of death for most of the whales is entanglement or vessel strikes. Also, since 2017, 16 live free swimming whales have been documented with serious injuries from entanglements or vessel strikes. A whale that has been determined to have a serious injury is unlikely to survive. And so the total number of right whales that have died in the unusual mortality event is 50. As well as this, researchers have recorded more deaths among adult females than adult males, and there are now only 90 breeding females left. It is thought that females, which undergo energetic stress from reproduction, may be more susceptible from dying from the chronic injuries caused by entanglement or vessel strikes. Females are also increasing the time interval between calves from three years to six to 10 years, which is also having an impact on population numbers. But there is some good news. During the 2021 calving season, 19 live calves have been recorded, which may not sound like very many, but in the previous four calving seasons, only 22 births were observed over the four years, which is less than one third the previous average annual birth rate for right whales. And on the NOAA website, they have pictures of the mothers and calves which is just so uplifting to see. The whale summer feeding grounds extend as far north as the Scotian Shelf and the Bay of Fundy, whilst winter calving grounds are in the shallow coastal waters off the coasts of Georgia and Florida. Along this migration route, they are often within 50 miles of the coast and face many dangers. But technology is helping people to save these beautiful right whales. Entanglement in fishing gear is a huge problem for the right whales. There are around 1 million fishing lines within the whale's migratory route and feeding areas. Long vertical ropes connect traps on the ocean bottom to floats on the water surface. This allows the fishermen to locate the traps and haul them in. The suspended ropes are very dangerous to right whales. It is estimated that 100 right whales every year are entangled and that about 83% of right whales have been entangled at least once. From 2010 to 2015, 85% of diagnosed right whale deaths were due to entanglements. The fishing rope gets wrapped around the whales and can cause serious harm, such as severing fins and tails and cutting to the bone. They can also end up dragging the heavy fishing gear with them for months and sometimes years, impeding their ability to swim, eat and breathe. They expend vital energy and lose weight. Those that survive may not have enough energy to reproduce. So what can be done about this? Well, there are a few things that are being considered. The first one is ropeless fishing gear. There are two options that are being tested in both the US and Canadian waters, with fishermen helping scientists in the process. One type that is already being used commercially in Australia replaces the static line in the water column with a coiled rope and a buoy that are inside a weighted bag attached to the trap on the ocean bottom. Fishermen can then send an acoustic signal to the trap which triggers a release, sending the buoy and rope floating to the surface, where they can be seen by the fishermen and hauled aboard, along with the trap. Another method of ropeless technology involves having a deflated buoy attached to the trap. An acoustic trigger inflates the buoy, which rises with the trap to the surface. The labelling of the fish that have been captured using ropeless technology is being considered to incentivise the use by fishermen, a great step forward for consumers. There is also an amazing group of people who belong to the Atlantic Large Whale Disentanglement Network who have managed to free hundreds of large whales from fishing gear. Some right whales are so badly entangled 
and so difficult to get close enough to help, the scientists from Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute have developed an experimental approach to disentangle them. They are using drugs on the right whale to enable the boats to get close enough to cut them free. Because of the need for the whale to be able to continue to swim and breathe, this approach is very challenging, but may be the last chance to save a particular whale. Another tool that is being used to help protect the right whales is that of a computer model. It has been designed so that a better understanding can be gained about the dynamics of right whale entanglement and so make changes to fishing gear to reduce entanglement risks. Reducing the strength of the rope used by fishermen is also being considered. Although it would not prevent entanglements, it would reduce the number of injuries and deaths. Vessel strikes are also a major cause of death and injury for right whales. Their migration route takes them near some very busy ports and numerous shipping lanes. Between 2003 and 2018, 70 right whales were killed by human-caused trauma, at least 16 of which were due to vessel strikes. However, as whales sink when they die, many vessel strikes go undetected, so there are quite likely to be many more. A simple way to reduce vessel strikes is to have speed restrictions. In 2008, they were put into place restrictions, and since then deaths due to vessel strikes have declined. However, given the unusual mortality event the right whale has been experiencing, the extent and duration of these speed restrictions is being reviewed, with the possibility of them being expanded. The shipping lanes of vessels have also been changed to route vessels through areas where the right whales are less likely to be. In 1999, planes and boats were used to spot right whales, so that vessels could be warned of their presence. But these methods have their limitations. They can't be used at night or in bad weather, and they don't spot whales when they aren't swimming near the surface. So another useful tool is being used, called the Digital Acoustic Monitoring Instrument, which uses hydrophones to listen for whale sounds. Every two hours, the data collected is transmitted via satellite back to a lab at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institute. The data is analysed, and then placed on a website where it is accessible to the public and organisations such as WhaleSafe. WhaleSafe produces an interactive map with a colour gradient showing the likelihood of whale presence and markers indicating whale sightings. This map helps vessels to avoid collisions with the whales. Digital acoustic monitoring systems can also be placed on autonomous underwater vehicles that listen for whale calls. If a whale is detected, then it sends an email or text message to scientists who can then send out an aerial survey for confirmation. They can then send out a warning to ships and fishermen, impose fishery closures or mandatory ship speed limits. In the US, a program called Right Whale Slow Zones asks mariners to voluntarily reduce speed in areas where right whales have been detected. Whilst in Canada, acoustic detections trigger mandatory closures of fishing grounds and a reduction of vessel speeds. Another technology which is being developed to detect right whales is that of thermal infrared cameras. They can be placed on wind farms where they can detect whales up to 10 kilometers away. They can also be placed on ships and alert the ship to the presence of whales up to several kilometers away, thus giving the ships enough time to slow down or change course. There is also an issue with noise pollution. Whales need to be able to communicate with each other and the high levels of noise are affecting their ability to do so. A study has also shown that exposure to low frequency vessel noise may be associated with chronic stress in whales, something that will impact on the recovery of the right whale. Much of this noise is coming from vessel traffic and the problem is getting worse. Research has shown that whales compensate this increase in noise by increasing the amplitude of their calls, but scientists are concerned that the noise will reach such a level that they will no longer be able to do this. There are technologies that can help with the production of noise from vessels, such as low noise propulsion systems, which use larger and slower spinning propellers to minimize cavitation. There are also some mounting systems that raise engines off the engine room floor to reduce vibration and vibration insulators that use elastic materials within the machinery. Guidelines on the level of marine noise have been set by the International Maritime Organization, but they are not mandatory, something which undoubtedly needs to be done. All of the technologies I have discussed not only have implications for the recovery of the North Atlantic right whale, 
but also on the well-being of other species of marine life that are harmed by human activity, from turtles becoming entangled in fishing gear to other cetaceans being hit by a vessel. Let us hope that it is not too late for the North Atlantic right whale and that these technologies, as well as the amazing people who carry out the rescue of whales that become entangled, help save these amazing creatures. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe and share with your like-minded friends.